guys, my name is Kate and I'm the Go Kids director here at Monterey Church. I wanna welcome you to Go Kids. So wherever you might be watching from, maybe you are in your PJs right now, maybe you're getting ready for lunch, or you just had breakfast. Wherever you're watching from, I am so excited that you're here. So let's pray and then get started. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for just every single person who is watching, Lord. I pray that this uh, would just be just glorifying to you, that, that we would just learn more about you and just your story and just the love that you have for us, Lord. So I thank you for today and I pray all these things in your name, amen. All right, let's get started. I'm Haley, and I was just thinking, if I were going to go on a treasure hunting adventure, who would be the best person to take along with me? Hmm, this is gonna take some wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. You know who knows a thing or two about hunting for treasure? Pirates! Arr! Pirates have been hunting for treasure for generations. She'd make the perfect person to bring on my adventure. Arr! I'll find your treasure for ye. X marks the spot. Then again, 
The only reason pirates buried treasure in the first place is because they stole it from someone else. I'm not sure they can be trusted. Sure we can. A pirate's word is her bond. That's the code of the sea. Arr. Well, hmm, when you put it that way. Hey, wasn't your eye patch on your right eye? Oh, uh, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> now, uh, I'm about the treasure. Hmm. I wonder if I should take my Aunt Jeannie on my adventure. Oh, how nice of you to think of me for your little trip. Bless your heart. Oh, I don't know. She may be a little old for treasure hunting. But then again, she was an investigative journalist for Archaeological Digest magazine for 40 years. 42 years, dear. Ooh. You know a thing or two about hunting for treasure, don't you, Aunt Jeannie? I've been around, that's for sure. Well, it seems like a no-brainer. It's obvious who I should take on the treasure hunt. It's... Arr, thank you, thank you, thank you. Was a hard decision, I'm sure, but... I'm the star that you've been searching for! In today's story, we'll hear about a king who had a hard decision to make. Follow the advice of his friends or people who are older and wiser. <laughs> it's fun to talk that way. <laughs> I imagine doing it for our whole adventure! Nope. <laughs> I'll see you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Second Chronicles, Chapter 10. For over 40 years, King Solomon ruled over Israel. During that time, he did some pretty amazing things, like building a breathtaking temple for the Lord in a beautiful palace for himself. He received visitors from all over the world. He shared with others the wisdom God had given him. Much of this wisdom can be found in the book of Proverbs, including this advice on how to gain wisdom. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Unfortunately, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, did not pay attention to his father's words. He believed his way was best. And when Solomon died, Rehoboam became king of Israel. All hail, All hail king, king Rehoboam! Wow, check me out! Golden crown, spiffy palace, this is the life! Though the kingdom was strong under Solomon, he made the people work extremely hard now the Israelites wanted to see how this new king would treat them. Led by a man named Jeroboam, they came to see the king. Hey, you stole my name. It's Jeroboam, not Rehoboam. <laughs> Whatevs, Jer. Now what do you want? Your father made us work very hard. Let us take more breaks and we'll serve you well. Sounds like you want to slack off. We just need a little more vacay time. Then we'll be ready to give it all we got. Uh, well... Come back in three days, Jer. Jeroboam and the Israelites left. Rehoboam paced the floor, trying to come up with a good answer. Yeah, no, maybe? Many times when Solomon needed wisdom, he asked God for it. Rehoboam didn't bother to talk to God, but he did at least talk to his father's wise advisors. The people want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Be kind to them. Absolutely. Give them what they're asking for. You'll win their loyalty that way. Then they will serve you well. Huh. Instead of taking the advice of these wise men, Rehoboam decided to ask his buddies, the guys he had grown up with. He found them eating honey cakes and debating racing chariots. Gotta go with gold rims is what I say. Nah, gold is all show. You have to add some diamonds for traction. Hey guys. Yo. What is up, my man? People want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Oh, this is good. You get to do the real king stuff now. 
You gotta show them who's boss. Uh, they think your dad was tough? Tell them my pinky finger's stronger than my daddy's legs. <laughs> yeah, and, and my dad gave you a heavy load, but you haven't seen nothing yet. I am gonna lay it on you. <laughs> Rayabum frowned. He thought hard for two whole seconds. Whoa, you guys are good. I'm totally doing that. After three days, Jeroboam and the Israelites with him returned. Hey, Jer. Your Majesty, will you lighten the heavy workload your father gave us? <laughs> my pinky finger is stronger than my father's legs. My father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I'll make it even heavier. My father punished stragglers. I'll double it up. Rehoboam finished with a flourish. He waited for people to tremble and bow low. Are you kidding me? Jeroboam turned to the Israelites. We don't want anything to do with this joker or the rest of David's family. Let's go back to our homes and start our own kingdom. Yeah! Hey, hey, wait. No, no, you can't do that. I'm in charge. Yeah, you're in charge of yourself. Good luck with that. Jeroboam and the men with him marched out and returned to their homes. From that day, the nation was split into two kingdoms. Rehoboam still ruled in Judah, but Jeroboam was made king of Israel. Totally not my fault. Rehoboam failed to listen to his father's own words. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Rehoboam's foolishness nearly cost him all of the kingdom. King Rehoboam made the wrong choice. He should have remembered what his father, King Solomon, wrote. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. That means if you want to become wise, you should find someone who's wiser than you to spend time with. Jesus' disciples spent three years hanging out with him, listening to him teach, watching the wise way he lived. We should find someone to learn from too. Maybe someone older and wiser. Oh, thank you, dear. Because when you surround yourself with foolish people, arr, you'll end up doing something foolish. Arr. You surround yourself with people who say mean things about others, you're going to say mean things about others. With angry people, you'll be angry. With people who break the rules, yep, you know what's gonna happen. But hey, you've been around, right? You know the difference between someone who makes wise decisions and someone who doesn't. So pick your friends carefully and find someone older and wiser to be your mentor, someone you can learn from. Here's the one thing to remember today. Hang out with wise people. Ask God to help you find the wise people in your life. He wants you to have wisdom, remember, and he can use other people to help show you the way. So. What do you say, Aunt Jeannie? You want to go on an adventure with me? Haley, my dear, I was made for adventure. Well, all right. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye from me too.